In today's video, we're going to try to capture and super compress the natural gas that's coming out of this geyser. Now, this is based on a video that this crazy guy built a while ago, and that is actually using a wheezewort, of all things, to actually pull a vacuum or a low pressure zone around a geyser so that it can continue to uh, eject more and more of its gas and then super compress it up top in a chamber over here. This one over here is self cooling. The one over here on the right is simply building up large amounts of pressure. I'm kind of curious to see if it'll work. Not only that, it's cycle 164 in my base and cycle 64 in this guy's base. So it's almost like it's meant to be. On top of all of that, there's something down here and I want to figure out what that is. I'm guessing it's going to be some sort of volcano. So far, I've found the normal volcano right down here. So that's just going to be igneous rock. But I'm guessing there's going to be a refined metal volcano somewhere and this might just be where it's at. So I'm starting to head into some more hazardous areas here. So I think it's a good idea to kind of produce some more atmosuit docks and everything right over here. And I can use the same setup and just kind of pipe it over there. Now, when I go in to dig into this area, mm, there's a little bit of polluted oxygen, not much, but I think it's still worthwhile to go ahead and put down one of these and put down a deodorizer just to just kind of handle some of that polluted oxygen that'll be produced in that. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and dig this out. There we go. Come on, dupes. Wow. Good job. Leon and Super Me <laughs> managed to find the one. Uh, and you know what? While I'm, while I'm doing the rest of this, I think it's a good idea to take a, a little bit of time just to put some fire poles in. I have more than enough iron at this point, so we should be able to see an improvement in travel time. We'll see if we can observe anything like that. All right, so that takes a little bit of power. Let's go ahead and just plug that in. I'm going to run three docks over here. We'll see if that works. I, I think that should be more than enough for what I got going on inside of there. Now, the reason I want docks uh, is because we might get into some natural gas that's a little bit hotter. I'm not too worried about the germs. We've kind of dealt with slime and all of that enough by now to where it's not a big deal. Although steam is always going to be fairly kind of hot and a little bit dangerous too. So yeah, it's probably a good idea. I'm just going to rework the pipes over here. I already have this gas pump set up to do what I want it to do. That's already stored up a bunch of oxygen, so these docks are ready to go. I don't think there's really any point to do anything more there. Okay, so for that, I'm going to need a couple more atmo suits. So there we go. One, two, three of those. Boom! Come on, baby. Let's make one of those. Nope. Come on, Kaya. You can do it. Nope. Bubbles has it. Bam! Okay, Otto's got it. <laughs> they build those so fast. Okay, here we go. We're going to deliver the suits. Oh, this is pretty simple. All right, so let's try to figure out this arrangement here. So what happened in this video is essentially we created this really long chain uh, line right here, and that was the key to getting a nice low pressure. So when, you, when you're moving something in a tile, uh, Lower. your lowest pressure is going to be like right there, and then everything gets a little bit higher and higher, higher pressure. So when you do that, you know, it, it creates that suction effect. And as long as there's a big enough pressure difference between the two areas, the wheezewort will continue to pump oxygen you know, from beneath it to above it. So that's the difference between this one and that one right there. All right, dupes, now that you have an Atmo suit, can you go in here and dig this stuff up? If I were to just plan this out, if I dig that right there, let natural gas flow down here, and then up like that, then that's where we're going to create that suction. Although I might want to make it a little bit, a little bit wider to the side here. Now, the reason you, you do this sort of loop right here where it continues to kind of cool things down is because you don't want the wheeze warts to overheat. So they overheat, they have an operating temperature of minus 60 to 95. And if you look at the gas temperature of natural gas here, it goes up to 150 degrees Celsius uh, when it's kicking out more and more gas. So what you really want is some sort of tile over here to transfer some thermal energy between here and the your storage area and have your wheeze wart in there just kind of constantly running around in a circle to cool down that storage. So one wheeze wart to pull it in and one wheeze wart or two wheeze warts to kind of cool it down. So just like what's going on over here. Now in the situation that it just has too much of a problem, we end up with a jam or something like that, then I'll want to have a door that I can put in here so I can get out of that. That way I can vent the pressure in here, down here in the left, or, or over here to the left, so that that gas will then flow back around and reset the wheeze wart. I'll set it up and then I'll explain it, a little, uh, explain it again. It's half 
kind of a, a thought and an experiment and the other half is it should be working so okay here's a thought i've never tried this but if we use a, an automatic dispenser right here and then we put sand in there will that sand i doubt it no i don't, I don't think so i don't think it'll block that I'm curious though, I've never tried that. Let me see if it works. Nothing in my brain says that that should work, but it's worth a try. Or what could I put in there that would then become sand if it got hot enough? Well, if I put dirt in there, dirt becomes sand, but that's up at 326 degrees Celsius. And if it changes inside the dispenser, then it would actually kick out as sand. So, but I've set it up now, so let me go ahead and try it. All right, come on dupes, just build this door, please. One door, <laughs> please. There we go. Good job, Leon. Yeah, it looks like the super dupes are, are uh, the atmosphere suits work just fine, even if they have a mechanized airlock. So that's good. Maybe it's just having this checkpoint right next to a door that makes it work. I'm not sure. In the past though, any time a super dupe tried to move really fast past a checkpoint, the suit like just continued to, to fly way over here. It was weird. It didn't make a lot of sense, but Looks like we've gotten past that. Ooh, got a lot of natural gas flowing through there. A couple of doors here should help that out. All right, I'm just gonna set that element sensor to natural gas. Yeah, we'll use a little mini gas pump to take care of it. All right, so I have a lot of ladders and stuff I wanna build in this area. So I wanna use local resources. So I have sedimentary rock here and some granite down there. Uh, that way I don't have to go and, and grab ore from way up here. I could just kind of use what I'm digging up. So ideally a duplicate will dig and, and then they'll go and build the ladder all at the exact same time. Just makes building ladders and stuff like that just a lot faster. You can see Merck's got it. He's got the idea. Good job, Merck. All right, so what do we have down here? Um, give me it new. Here, dig one more tile, please. Oh, a steam vent. All right, cool. Whoa, 500 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot. So yeah, I've got more than enough water down here. <laughs> oh, and there's a thermal nullifier over there too. Wow, all right. I'll just take one of everything, please. Thank you very much. Okay, put a flower pot right there. That's where a wheeze wart will go. And then we have another wheeze wart over here. This is the one that does all of the pressure air building and this one over here does the cooling. And then inside of here, boom. A nice steel gas pump. All right, good job, dupes. Now I need a couple of wheeze warts. I know where I can get some of those, unless I have them. Mm, no, I don't see any wheeze warts in this biome. Oh, there's way down there, way down there, there's one. And then there's like water right there. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and just dig right down here. Maybe I'll, I'll get to that wheeze wart. Come on, dupes, dig. There you go, stinking. Have at it. All right, so we'll dig that up, then we'll come over here, and then just continue to dig down like this, and get that other wheeze board. Perfect. Merc, everybody's waiting on you, bud. I think I may just disable, you know, all the normal duplicates from going inside of here. Maybe. I don't know. Okay, so it looks like I was able to get rid of most of that natural gas in that in the area there. I didn't even need to use those two canister fillers right there. So if we take a look at the oxygen, mm, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, nice. I think the natural gas just mostly just settled right down here. But you see how it settles on top of the carbon dioxide? So if you get that in the farm, that can cause you some issues. So just to keep these guys happy, I think what I'm going to do here is just to, if I detect carbon dioxide, I'll pump it inside of there. I just feel like that's a nice thing to do for these little slicksters. They are continuously starving most of the time, so this should keep them happy. Hey, there's another wart seed. Thanks, Pring Pod. It's like you know what I want. All right. Wheeze wart. Boom. Wheeze wart. Boom. We got some sweeping to do, by the way. Look at all this. Ugh. So many debris everywhere. Okay, so what I need to do here is just to create a single tile tube all the way in. So what I want to do is take the floor down like this, just like that. 
So I kind of have to recreate the floor once I've already built all of this. So I may need some ladders right there. Oh, and this is a cool trick. I haven't shown this one in a while, but if you put a deodorizer right here, since that's oxygen, it kind of really helps keep polluted oxygen from flowing through. Yeah, because if you take a look at the germs, whoops, I let a lot of slime lung in. Hey, this is looking promising. So this hydrogen vent is now starting to give off a little bit of hydrogen. And that means this pipe right here, well, it's just charging up with more and more hydrogen inside of it. One of the things I could do here is just kind of stop that so that the gas then flows in, stops, and continues to go around. But if we take a look at the temperature inside here, even though that this is giving off a ton of heat, like super, super hot, 309 or so, we can see that by the time it gets up here to the top, you know, it's only 90 degrees. So that's pretty good. Remember, this is coming out at 500 degrees Celsius. So while I did back this up, definitely want it to keep flowing again, so. Merc, flick that switch, Murdy. Anybody? Nope, nope, please don't ignore it. There we go, somebody did. So let's take a look at the heat now. 27 degrees, okay, great. So what I want to do is I want to see, yes, look, it's getting quite a bit warmer over here. It ha it's going to take a little while because it has to heat this water up from 29 degrees Celsius, which is, it's going to take a while. All right, so now that has, no, not quite completely backed up. A little bit more and it will. There we go, that maxes out the pipe. What I'll do next, after I max this pipe out, I'll come over here and I'll max this pipe out as far as where hydrogen is at. And then I'll try to filter out some of the chlorine that got in there because I don't really I don't really need that. And then once I have that, since this is continuing to stay nice and cool, I can just extend this loop from here uh, to this turbine as well. And because I double the amount of radiant pipe down there, I'll just kind of double the amount of radiant up here. So while I'm waiting for that to happen, I might as well just go ahead and build it. There we go. Oh man, that means I'm going to have to use ceramic. At least I already have some built up. Ha ha. Okay, so here's an interesting idea. If I use a door here and a couple doors over there, what I could essentially do is if I wanted to put a pump right here that I just really wanted to pull a vacuum for a lot of this, I could just build it right up there and then once I have it, close that off. I was just kind of trying to think through how do, how do I make sure that all of this ends up natural gas and has no mixture of anything. So if I do all of the vacuuming over here, you know, that's part of it, but it would take a really, really long time. So having a, a an airlock over here, that would definitely help. All right, good deal. So this loop up top is now completely full of hydrogen. You can see that the temperature flowing in is at 60 degrees. The temperature flowing out of here is at 48. So yeah, it's doing its thing. So what I can use up here is just a simple little gas pipe element sensor. And then right after that, in the uh, direction of flow here, I'll just put a gas shutoff valve and I can put a gas vent right to that. So if this becomes active, that thing turns on, the next tile moves in, goes out of the vent, so I should be able to get the chlorine out that way. So we'll just use a little manual generator and a small battery. It's very, very low power stuff. So that, we'll just look for chlorine. Of course, now I have an issue with the pipe direction. There you go. So first I'll get rid of the chlorine, then I'll bring that in. So here comes the rest of the chlorine. Right down here, poof. And it is, it is completely clean now. Awesome. So now I'm just going to use this gas bridge just like that because I don't have two whites there, uh, an inlet and an inlet. It'll be set up right, it'll be green, green, white. So now the hydrogen that I, I bring out of here, once it reaches the pr required pressure to pump, will then flow out. So what I want to do is actually make this maybe something a little bit higher. 400 or so should do. Okay, so inside of here, I need a little automation. I just have an Atmo sensor in order to make sure that this pump has enough pressure to run efficiently. As long as I have that, I should be good to go. Then I'll just bring the gas out right there. Okay, so one of the thing I've done down here is use a couple of hydro sensors. That way I can control these doors via automation. Uh, but I can do it without sending a dupe in there. So if I go to above 500 or whatever, it'll say close or below. So there we have it. And a dupe doesn't need to go over there and actually flip a switch. So it's kind of a little trick that you could use. It's great though. So you see how these doors are open right now? 
Don't want that. Send it to above real quick. There we go. Close it down. Okay, so I'm at the point now where I want to start to close this off and pull a vacuum inside here. So, I've already got that thing wired up. I'm going to set up a second pump right there. Just because I have a little bit of polluted oxygen up top there. So, maybe I don't need that. Maybe I can just click open on this door for long enough. And this thing will naturally push everything out. So I just end up with pure natural gas down there. There we go. Ha! It worked. Natural gas everywhere. So we don't need that. Thanks for trying, Fane. All right, I'll just stick a high pressure gas vent right there for now. And we'll plug this thing in just to pull a vacuum. Okay, awesome. I have two loops now complete. So this is continuously running here. And that's continuously running up there. Excellent. So now just to deconstruct this, and connect the pipes, and I'm good to go. Excellent. Just like that. All right, so there we have it. We, I now have cooling on this steam turbine. I have cooling on that one as well. Take a look at the temperature. Yeah, it's nice and cool. So I'll deconstruct that pipe. Put one right there, just like that. And then bring this over. Boom. Just a little bit more dupes. Come on, just a little bit more. There you go. Well, we're just waiting for Fane. Got it. All right, so that opens up a little bit of a gap. So that'll be filled in with this reserve right there. All right, so now what to do with my hydrogen? Well, I already have hydrogen over here. And the other thing is I have power distribution right here, which this is not my final solution for my total power distribution, but for right now, it's working pretty good. And so I think it makes sense just to take the hydrogen generator. We'll stick it right up here. Hopefully I can make it out of steel. And then I could just connect it straight into the heavy watt wire down here. Hmm. The problem I having, I'm having right now is that even though I want to make some steel, so I guess I can just easily just do this number, make a little bit of steel like that. Hmm, I guess I can't, actually, because that's disabled. What would be a better solution to my problem is if I could get some more oil. Hmm, can't get any there. What do we have down here? Not a lot. Well, I do have some oil right down here. So I tell you what, let's go ahead and just keep digging down this way. Since I already have all of these ammo suits set up here. Now I'm not going to wait for steel just to make this hydrogen generator. What I can do here is just make the hydrogen generator. I'll slap a smart battery down right next to it. And just kind of like you were probably expecting, use a small power transformer and I'll use that to transmit the power into the grid, uh, depending on what the battery level is. Nice thing about this is that all I have to use is, you know, light wires. So I could just do that, just like so. Deconstruct that stuff, because I don't need it. And then right down here, I could just do that, and then create one spot of heavy watt wire, boom. And connect in the light wire right there. So then I'll use automation just like this, with a little knot gate, to do what I need to do. And I got hydrogen right there, boom. Everything I need, solved. All right, so how this is working over here is that it's working to build the battery up to 99% right there. And then at that point, it turns off the generator and we dump the power out. So that power then runs through here at 1,000 watts and runs into the heavy watt wire starting to, and, that, and that's where it builds up those batteries. Now, depending on what those batteries are doing, they continue to dump out into the rest of the base. Maybe or maybe not. Now, it is important to mention that I don't have any batteries downstream of this. Or maybe I should. All right, it is what it is. It's working. All right, so now that I have some extra power, let's go ahead and just run this gas pump. Get all of that stuff out of there. You can see how well this little deodorizer just keeps all of that polluted oxygen from flowing through. Perfect. Natural all the way over there. Yeah, good job. Polluted oxygen. Ah, I think I might have sh uh, should have put that pump a little bit higher. I suppose that wouldn't really hurt anything, though. All right, so how's our hydrogen doing over here? Well, it's definitely starting to heat up a little bit. If we take a look at the temperature, yeah, we're up to about 64 degrees in here. I expect that up here will be, will be 120, maybe even a little bit higher. Remember, our overheat temperature on this thing is 275. So the goal is to build up some heat over here and then transport it over here on the left. So right now this is up to 60 degrees. 
So it's still got a ways to go before it can even get the before it can even turn on the steam turbine. I am running a little bit of a mini gas pump. I moved it from over here downward. So that way I can convert more of this into crude oil, which is good. If the crude oil over here ever ever builds up enough, I'll actually open up this door and then I can come down here and just kind of sweep that stuff up. I might even be able to use a pitcher pump for a little bit, but uh, there's not a whole lot I could do there. All right, come on, polluted oxygen. You just need, we're into the milligrams now, so it's very, very low. I really should have put that pump up higher. Like had I put it right here, it would have been perfect. How are you starving, Slickster? I'm giving you food constantly. Look at this. You're like right next to the vent. Just eating. Ah, you're always starving. How are there so many Dracos up here? Where'd you all come from? And why is this your favorite spot? What? Hmm, we got ourselves a glossy Draco. How many critters do I have in here? Oh, too many. Uh, seven. Okay, now you guys mentioned something that was really important. And that is that I need some some different food down here for uh, a glossy Draco to actually eat. Their diet is different than the normal Dracos. So they can only eat mealwood and bristle blossoms. Which I guess I didn't look close enough down here because there is neither of those in that area. Oh, but the bristle blossoms, they're not gonna grow in that temperature, are they? I'm not seeing any good place to put that glossy Draco. The only option it seems like I have is to build some place for it. I could put it in my farm. How would that make you feel, Mr. Glossy Draco? There you go. Enjoy life, it's kind of a weird spot. I don't have any hydrogen for you yet. But at least you're not gonna go hungry. Dopes, what are you doing? Nobody's working around here. What are you guys, you waiting for something to happen? Yeah, me too. This right here. Ugh. Oh, but here you go. Here you go, dupes. Go down here, we'll dig this out. Mm-hmm. I mean, when in doubt, you guys can just dig. But you see this? Mmm, it's an oil reservoir. Perfect. And you guys know what we can do with an oil reservoir. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is brutal. At 15.2 milligrams. Oh. Okay, give me a second. I'm just going to open this for a second. Boosh. Close it back down. There we go. A bunch of natural gas. Uh, does natural gas not want to flow into a vacuum? And what? Clay. What's wrong with your game, dude? Now, let's see what happens. Can I force that polluted oxygen out of there? <laughs> There's 60, 600 grams here. And then, get this. Six milligrams above it. All right, then. Forget it. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now it is... Yes, we were able to crush the last bit of that polluted oxygen. No. Okay, it's like right there. That's, that's not gonna hurt anything. As long as it isn't down here, we're okay. So you see what's happening down here is that the gas over here is very high pressure. We're talking three kilograms or so. And then as it's getting drawn through this big pipe right here, it's going down to 600 grams. So that's allowing that to just kind of draw out and, and go lower and lower in pressure. And then I can have a higher pressure over here. So look at this, we're over one kilogram right here and we're at 600 down below so the idea is that we can keep doing this over and over again and just this just continues to build up in pressure at least that was the idea with the video so it worked in concept here i, I built it one time besides this but never this clean so there's some new ideas here at least with the doors now this wheeze wart here is just going to continue to recirculate this natural gas continuously dropping it in temperature so that, you know, I don't end up overheating anything. All right, good job, dupes, for digging this out. And then right down here, we've got an oil reservoir, and now we can get down into this area as well. This is where I can get my hands on some crude oil. Matter of fact, is there any sort of fancy spot to mop something up? What if I dig that and then get, and, and see if I can trick it with a mop? Come on, somebody come down here and dig this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on! Haha! Uh, -ha. I ended up getting a mop right there. <laughs> Anybody? 
Merc's got it. Way to be a team player. Good luck. Darn it! I only got 240 kilograms out of that. I'll try it again. Yes! Aha! All right, if not, I'll just dig down here. Kind of store up some of that waste water and everything. And then, yeah, tap into that crude oil. However, you can see that there's actually 3,000 kilograms per tile right there, so that will probably expand once we uh, dig into it. So I'll, I'll want to be careful. Did we mop anything there? No idea. One thing to keep an eye out for is that this fossil, good stuff. You can use that to make steel or lime, I should say. And then lime is used to make steel. Okay, so how's this pressure doing over here? Ooh, look at that, we're up to three kilograms. Bubbles, what are you doing, Bubbles? Bubbles, Bubbles, you're broken, what are you doing? Oh yeah, yeah, way to go, Bubbles. Perfect. That's what I was looking for right there. Get all of that mopping. Mop that, yes. Look at that, look at that. 4,000 kilograms in that one spot right there. Uh-oh. That rock is about to explode. <laughs> Quick, mop it up before before something bad happens. Oh yeah, and remember to sweep. Okay, yeah, you can see that this thing is not overpressuring. No, it's doing just fine. And down here, maintaining 700 grams. Perfect up top. 6.2 kilograms. Ha-ha! Take that! Now, we have to get over 20 kilograms before we can consider ourselves being super compressed up there. And there's many different ways we could do this, but these words are just kind of fun. All right, so how's this, how's this oil doing? Do I have more? Well, that's at 106, so yeah, that must have come from there. Oh, never mind. Fane, you've got such a long way to go. Are you gonna die of starvation? Yeah, see, this, this exploded and more and more crude oil now filled this area. But at least we're mopping it up. Good job, Kaya. That crude oil keeps going up and up and up. A mop is way better than a pitcher pump. How about that? Fane, you don't have to disinfect this thing. You can just... Oh, dude, just go get some food, all right? I know you're just as hungry as I am right now, which is really hungry. But come on, man. You don't have to starve. You can grab something to eat. Hmm. He has to go to the bathroom more than he has to eat. Okay. Now... Now, oh, look at that. We did eat all of the edible stuff. All right, I'll make it up for you, dupes. Y'all get to have some barbecue. Look at that. Isn't that going to be good, Fane, huh? Mmm, delicious. Okay, let's just see what his morale is right now. He dropped to 17 while he was eating this delicious food. Mmm, that's a long chew. Oh my gosh, how... Boom! Up to 33. That is some good food. Tell you what, we'll really crank up the decor around here. Ooh, a metal block? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of gold. Ooh. Landscape canvas. We'll build that right there. Ooh. That's gonna be great. Ooh, can I even stack in some granite? Ah, molding? Yes. All right, guys. Price is right. How good is the decor going to be in this tile, in this spot right here? Ooh, hang on, hang on, hang on. We got gold tiles. Yes. That's what happens when you feed all your dupes barbecue. They turn around and they make everything out of gold. All right, if I had to guess, I'm going to say this is going to be a plus. 230. Don't be doing 231. Gristle berry forever. Frost buns. Yep. BBQ. Mmm, continuous. Omelets. Oh, yeah. Fried mushrooms. You know it. Look at that. 177,000. Now, now, now. Dupes. Make sure you sweep this. I want accurate numbers. And that's right. Use the sink. Yes. Circulate that water. Super meat. Let's do some art. Merc, you're about to have, have the best day of your life here. I mean, I know you're sick, but hey, you can still be good. I mean, I can only imagine that it's probably something down here. Super Meep. Oh, he's going to wash his hands first before he does the art. Nope. Dude. Priority level nine, dude. Today. There, it's your highest priority. 
Do it. Bam! Masterpiece. Bam. Look at that ma- That is- I've been to the art museum. They have a picture like that. It's... Well, I'll tell you what. It always gets a reaction. Ooh, I like that one. A genius marble statue. The disapproving griffin. I like that one. All right, let's sweep this stuff up. Now, we, now I don't want any dupes down here. Okay, one more. One more. If not, I'll just kind of move it by hand. I want to get it accurate numbers. Price is right, you know? You got to be right. What's the decor? Well, technically, if you guessed 120... Well, then you were exactly right, because that's the maximum. Unless somebody makes a mod to bring it back to what it used to be. However, I'm not going to settle for that. So 157.5 is just from the metal tiles. 52.5 is from that statue. 42 is from the marble one. And then the masterpiece artwork above that is another 33. Oof. I think I was low. Crown molding gives us plus 24. Ah, uh, and apparently the sink is made of something special. Plus 22. However, gosh, we get some nasty, ugly pipes behind that, so minus 30. For a grand total of 301. Boom. That's some decor. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do we have enough plastic to make a comfy bed? <gasps> we do. Super meep. Get rid of this flower pot. We don't need anything living inside of here. And, while you're at it, get rid of that disgusting cot. Sweep it up real nice. And while you're at it, slap down a comfy bed. Ah, oh, darn it. <laughs> get rid of this statue, too. And now, slap down a comfy bed. Mm-hmm. Boom. And now that's a bedroom rather than a barrack. It's only plus one morale, but you know what? It's kind of cool, isn't it? All right, so is this continuing to work? <laughs> like a champ, look at that, still. Still low pressure here, still high pressure there. We're up to 13 kilograms. Nice, it's good to see that that's working. How, how's the hydrogen doing? It's continuing to float around. It's up to 82 degrees, not bad. We continue to use this to run some power, so that's a good deal. And now I have M more oil? <laughs> Maybe? A little bit? More stuff slowing around. I'm slowly building it up. Yeah, it's working. It's working. So this one's just waiting for a little bit more steel. So if I say 600, then that'll run just a little bit. There we go. This one, it continues to run because what I'm trying to do is make more gold. Because I used a lot of it in a couple of statues down here. In the most complete overkill electric grill I've ever made. <laughs> hmm, you know what? I think these dupes deserve something nice. Have some gold tiles for floors. I'm spoiling them rotten. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't do this. Wait a minute, some of those are made of iron. Crap. Well, some dupes will get gold. The rest, well, you guys need to make more gold first. <laughs> that is an eye-bleeding negative 650 in here. Every time I use clink the decor, this is like the first thing I look at. There's just so much to sweep. My quest to sweep everything into just a few tiles continues. I'll tell you what, though. It does take a lot of time. But if we take a look at what's in here, well, yeah. We're talking tons and tons of stuff. I think that's 24 tons of iron ore. Oh my. No, more than that. That's just one stack. Uh, the decor overlay gives us some sort of idea. So, negative 935 degrees. So, the total decor is negative 944. Whoa. Whoa. You thought this was bad. <laughs> All right. What's the decor like in here? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Boom. 114. Bam. 120. BAM! 109. 120. Beautiful. So that's a big step up from uh, 194. Oh, and look at that. We got a thousand, just like that. I didn't have to go over there and click on anything. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. This... This is like the best thing I've built in a long time. Or certainly say, more importantly, this right here is the best thing I've built in a long time. Because it just automates that stuff. Uh, I don't need to keep clicking more and more of it. Beautiful. 
Okay, let's take a quick moment here just to take a look at the reports here. Now that we have things like fire poles inside the base, and we also have that hydrogen generator. So the things I want to look at here is the equipment power. So when we take a look at the hydrogen generator, and I've added it into the mix, you can see that the coal generator's priority just keeps going down and down. Uh, and the steam turbine actually does ramp up quite a bit there. So you can see that we're actually getting a little bit of power out of that. And then once we get the hydrogen generator in there as well, well, that drives the coal generator down even further. So there's only been a few cycles, but you can definitely see that the hydrogen um, generator is definitely kicking in a decent amount of kilojoules to the base. So it seems to produce right around 200 kilojoules per cycle. Power did increase quite a bit. You can see that it actually did scale up the amount of that I'm actually using because I have a lot of uh, a lot of those pumps that were running right there. So and that was kind of interesting too. Now remember that we added the fire poles right around 164. So what I want to see here is potentially some travel time go down. And it's really, really hard to tell. <laughs> but what I do notice here is at least work time has gone down. I don't know if that's a good thing, but it's gone down. But uh, that's idle time increasing. So actually I think all I ended up doing here was running out of things to do. So while I know the fire poles make things more efficient, it's hard to see an actual report that reflects that. The only other chart that I can see that has a big change here is stress. So you can definitely see where we started to eat some of that barbecue. Mmm, delicious. And speaking of that, we should probably stop eating that barbecue. There you go. I'll try to save some of that for later when we get into all of the space stuff and those really high-end duplicates. But you know what? At least Leon here can cook some delicious food in the best place ever. As far as food and oxygen and chores, not really a whole lot happened there. You guys heard that I enjoy audiobooks and asked for a recommendation. One of the series that I've been enjoying here is Awaken Online. If you're curious, you can check it out in the link in the description below. All right, well, we've made it to cycle 190. Yeah, I think things are going pretty good here. So I'm just gonna have to call it right here. This did work out really, really well. The Venturi Weezwort, beautiful. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider that subscribe button. Have a wonderful day. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothkar, out.